Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Just a little bit windy for the microphone. And it is Friday the 13th. It is your lucky day. Friday the 13th. <coughs> be Friday, May 13th, 2022. So I'm a little bit uh, nervous about hitching up this little trailer for the last time. <coughs> Heading back to Bugs in a Jar Farm. Pulling up to Bugs in a Jar Farm for the first time in six and a half months uh, on Friday the 13th. So hopefully uh, this will not be my last rant, but since it is Friday the 13th, like any other Friday, we're going to do the spin on the ecological meltdown roundup rant where we're just going to check in with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to <coughs> find out how this is uh, our unlucky day on the planet and I've got a lot to do so I'm just going to touch on a few of these. Of course we always like to get Rhett's <coughs> Amazon deforestation uh, stats for the month and you will take you will be totally shocked by this Amazon deforestation surges in April Wow deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon exceeded 1,000 square kilometers in April the highest total since 2008 and roughly twice the level of April one year ago, according to data released today by Brazil. This is Brazil's own government data, uh, talking about more than a thousand square kilometers in one month, and didn't even uh, get to the end of the month. The loss, which only accounts for the first 29 days of the month, put deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon through the first four months of 2022 at 1,950 square kilometers as the region heads into the peak deforestation season. Last year deforestation topped 13,000 square kilometers for the first time since 2006. Scientists have warned that the Amazon may be, may be approaching a tipping point where vast areas of rainforest will transition to a woody savanna. And if you heard my rant from Monday, uh, I think it was Monday where I was talking about uh, the, the, I think the rant's called the Orwellian, the new Orwellian definition of sustainability. And what they were talking about, if you missed that round, you might want to go listen to it, is in uh, over there in Sub-Saharan Africa where we actually have a historical example of a rainforest that due to human activity tipped over into a woody savanna and then when that happened, needless to say, the biodiversity completely collapsed and it has been a woody savanna shut up for uh, 85,000 years. So this is the new definition of sustainability. Uh, Anyway, so much for the Brazilian Amazon and uh, we can look forward to the peak deforestation season and I don't know what is going on with my computer. It is not scrolling up or down. Okay, as long as we're uh, talking uh, about uh, deforestation. I wanted to, uh, anyway, we're just going to go up to the top. Uh, all right. 
Wow. Thai meaning in Thailand, Thai gold mine blamed for sickening local villagers is set to reopen. Yes, the Cha Tree Mining Complex owned by this group out of Australia was shut down in 2017 um, after mass blood tests found that the majority of children and adults tested exhibited elevated levels of heavy metals including arsenic, manganese, and cyanide. Yes, the Thai government shut down the mine seeking very substantial damages and now, guess what? The government is given the green light to reopen the mine. What a surprise. I love it when they ask the question, can celebrities and social media such as Collapse Chronicles on YouTube really, quote, rewrite extinction? Yes, the answer to the question is no. Uh, they're talking about this new uh, th th this new hopium thing uh, called rewriting extinction um, is is just a bunch of greenwashing hopium. Yes, some experts say rewriting extinction is selling a false narrative. Do you think so? Uh, a bunch of celebrities. These apocalyptimists, yes. I'm surprised by this story. Human disturbance is pitting wolverines against an unlikely competitor, coyotes. <coughs> New research finds that when coyotes and wolverines come into contact, the rarer wolverines uh, lose out. Uh, I thought a wolverine could kick a coyote's ass. I'm really surprised that uh, I guess maybe a pack of coyotes uh, can take down a wolverine. Um, here's another update on <coughs> the Indonesian illegal fishing. Yes. Do you believe that Indonesia does not have enough personnel to patrol and monitor for illegal and destructive fishing? Yes, imagine that. Anyway, um, you will be shocked by this one. <coughs> China funded dam could disrupt key Argentine glaciers and biodiversity. Two dams are being built on the Santa Cruz River in Argentina's Patagonia, threatening glacier movements and endemic wildlife that rely on the surrounding wetlands. Yes. Several indigenous communities say officials failed to consult with them before starting the dams. Despite protests, lawsuits, and court orders to pause construction, work on the complex, part of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, has continued nonetheless. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, uh, guys, I just have to, uh, I, I have a lot on my plate and this is a phone call that I need to get to, so I'm skipping over. Okay.
what is going on with biomass burning, otherwise known as burning down the planet to save the planet, missing the emissions for the trees, biomass burning booms in East Asia. Over the past decade, Japan and South Korea have increasingly turned to burning wood pellets for energy, leaning on a UN loophole that dubs biomass burning as carbon neutral. Yes, uh, I guess Japan has 34 biomass burning energy plants. Uh, South Korea has 17 and four more on the way. Experts say these booms, these biomass burning booms in Asia, the first major expansion of biomass burning outside of Europe could lead to a large undercounting of actual carbon emissions and worsening climate change while putting pressure on already beleaguered forests. There you go, biomass burning, burn the planet to save the planet. That is the United Nations uh, saving the planet. Um, okay, again, uh, I'm just, uh, guys, uh, th there's a lot of stuff here. I have to admit this is not a real juicy manga bay, a, a lot of really esoteric stuff that I don't have time to get into here. I love that this is a little bit complicated uh, of this greenwashing hopium crap. I do not know why Rhett Butler uh, prints this crap when he knows it's greenwashing crap. Deforestation neutral mining? Madagascar study shows it can be done, but it is complicated. It's not complicated. It's bullshit. There's nothing complicated about it. They, it is all of this hocus pocus, smoke and mirrors, creative accounting. And what they're talking about this is biodiversity offsets, which is, which is a close cousin to these equally BS carbon offsets. What these biodiversity offsets are and, and you can even find this uh, with, with uh, people wanting to drain a wetland in Florida, for instance, to build, to build a, uh, a housing development. This is, this is all over the planet. So the, the, the scheme, this greenwashing scheme is that like this mine in Madagascar. Okay, so what they're going to do is let's say they're going to demolish 1,000 acres of rainforest for their planet-eating mine. So what they do is they go and buy another 1,000 acres of rainforest, you know, outside of their mining concession, and they usually hand it over to the government or some private NGO that manages these forests. So they're claiming we just saved a thousand acres of rainforest that would have been cut down by another planet eater if we had not bought this thousand acres of rainforest another planet eater would have cut it down. So this gives us license to cut down 1,000 acres to, you know, to crank up our mine. So we have no net deforestation. It, 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 it is unadulterated greenwashing BS that just gives these planet-eating corporations 
carte blanche to go right on about destroying the planet and saying there's no net deforestation. So they started out with 2,000 acres of rainforest. Okay. This really isn't rocket science. You have 2,000 acres of rainforest. You buy this 1,000 acre of rainforest so this planet eater doesn't take them down. You destroy this 1,000 acres of rainforest and now your 2,000 acres of rainforest has turned into 1,000 acres of rainforest. It sounds to me like a 50% loss, net loss in rainforest or in Florida wetlands or whatever. Uh, is there anybody uh, calling this net zero? It, it, it's BS. It's net 50% loss. But they probably are right that another planet eater would have cut down the other thousand acres. Good Lord, there's no way to win, guys. All right. Scheme to stop conflict minerals fails to end child labor in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, report says. Much of the world's supply of coltan Tin and tungsten minerals is extracted using child and forced labor despite an industry mechanism meant to guarantee responsible supply chains, a new report alleges. The, in, the investigation by campaign group Global Witness found major failures in the chain of custody for minerals produced in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes. The findings, which align with other investigations by Congolese NGOs in the United Nations, point to large amounts of ore from unvalidated mines entering the supply chain, including from areas known to be under control of militias and rogue army units. Of course, the, uh, the, uh, the planet eaters are denying the charges but have not yet refuted any of the evidence provided. <clears throat> anyway, more stories about, it's just too complicated this thing. Here is a story about Lake Victoria. <coughs> I think a Nile perch, isn't that a tilapia? Uh, in a new book, British author Mark Weston examines an environmental crisis on East Africa's Lake Victoria that has been a century in the making and stems from the introduction of the non-native Nile perch to the lake in the 1950s. I'm pretty sure this is tilapia and how uh, this, this introduction of this invasive species has just completely, uh, d d d just, you know, completely upset the apple cart in Lake Victoria. You know, I was living on this lake down in uh, the Peruvian Amazon where these damn tilapia were introduced. Uh, lake Atitlan in Guatemala <coughs> where these fish uh, completely, I mean, everywhere that they introduced, I'm thinking Nile perch or tilapia, I, I might be mixing up my invasive species, but these Nile perch are, you know, get introduced to all of these tropical lakes anywhere on the planet and just wreak all kinds of havoc. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. 
they died from the spills, from the spill, the animals that could not escape Peru's oil slick of the 147 birds, mainly cormorants, Peruvian boobies, Peruvian boobies, and Humboldt penguins that were rescued alive from an oil spill, only 79 have survived, and my guess is a lot of those are still going to die. Uh, the January 15th oil spill resulted in 12,000 barrels of oil pouring into the sea with the company responsible, Spain's Respol, Repsol Corporation, reportedly failing to take containment measures immediately. The spill has also devastated local fisheries. <clears throat> Uh, and all the rest of the usual. Uh, okay, you will not believe that a logging contracting audit in the Democratic Republic of the Congo has uncovered serious violations. The publication of an audit of forestry contracts in the DRC has exposed serious management failures. The audit cites serial breaches of the country's forest code. Can you imagine what the DRC forest code even looked like before the breaches? And more than a dozen violations of this, this BS moratorium that uh, they used to talk about. Uh, anyway, the audit is the first requirement to access a $500 million fund for protection of the Congo Basin pledged by fundraisers last November. Uh, anyway, good luck on that. Uh, here's a story about nitrogen pollution in Sri Lanka. Good Lord. Uh, South Asia is a global hot spot for atmospheric nitrogen pollution. Uh, do you think so? Uh, here is, uh, gee, you cannot believe this, that indigenous communities have experienced water contamination from nearby oil extraction uh, since 2014. This is along the Colombia-Ecuador border. Uh, you will never believe that, and we're just going to wrap it up here, whoever would have thought that the Indonesian government is lagging independent effort to recognize indigenous lands. Yes. Uh, good luck on that. Uh, anyway, a bill on indigenous rights has been stalled in the Indonesian parliament for a decade now. Anyway, guys, it's just another week on the planet here on Friday the 13th, but I really do have to pack it up and uh, leave Sister Sandy's place and head it back to Bugs in a Jar Farm while I still can. So come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. We are open for business in two weeks. I got two weeks to get that place ready for my Airbnb and my hip camp. 
Come find me and Sancho. Bye, guys.